To get started on this exercise, you needed to have downloaded the custom brush JPEG from the class page. We're going to drag this into Photoshop and this will set up a document that has everything exactly the size and proportion that we need. The first thing we need to do is to select our brush tool. Brush tool is found in your toolbox towards the middle and if you look up at the very top left hand corner, you can click on the brush drop down menu and let's reset this tool. Click on the little cogwheel and then choose Reset Tool. And this will put everything back to normal. All of the opacity, blending modes, flow, everything will be back as if it was the first time you're using this tool. We also need to open up our brush settings panel. You can do this by clicking on the little folder. This will open up or pop out your brushes to the side. Make sure you have your layers panel selected and also your control panel will be open up at the top as well. Before we get started doing this, notice that you've got a variety of different pictures on the left hand side and you've got a little test area in gray over on the right hand side. In addition to painting inside of this test area, I'm also going to make one new layer and this is going to be our test layer. This way if we do any painting and we need to erase it, everything will be done inside of this layer rather than messing up our background. To create and customize your brush, the first thing we need to do is to choose a selection tool. In this case, I'm going to use my rectangular marquee and I'm going to zoom in to this hatch tool first. With this, we're going to highlight or select the entire hatched area, go up to Edit and down to Define Brush Preset. The first thing it's going to ask you to do is to give it a name. And by default, we're going to call this our hatch brush. Notice in your brush settings, you now get a preview of what it looks like. For this one, let's choose our brush tip shape, set the size of it to be 250 pixels, and the spacing is going to be 60%. Now these numbers don't have to be 100% accurate, so if they're off by a little bit, that's okay. To add some random variability to this, we're going to click on Shape Dynamics and let's randomize the angle that it's going to be at. In this case, we'll rotate it 100%. With this done, you can now test your brush by going over to the little test area. Make sure to deselect by going up to Select and Deselect and then painting on to see what it would look like. Once you get the effect that you want, you can go to your brush settings, click on the little plus sign and this will allow you to save your brush. So we're going to call this Hatch Brush 1 and we can unclick the tool settings so we can use this on any tool that we want. When we say OK, this brush and all of its settings will now be saved at the very bottom of your tool brush. Let's move on to the second one. To create the rake brush, again choose your rectangular marquee and select the area. Go up to Edit and let's define our brush preset. For this one, we want to be able to paint and have this rake brush actually follow our area. If we were to test it now, you can see there's not much we can do with it. So again, in our brush tip shape, the first thing we're going to do is to set the size to be about 200 pixels. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees so that we can see all of the lines and we can keep our spacing a little bit closer in to around 10%. Under Shape Dynamics, now we're going to set the angle jitter to zero and we're going to have it control based on the direction that we're moving. We can also turn on pressure sensitivity for our size jitter too. Now when we paint, you can see it's going to follow the direction of wherever we're moving and it'll also change the size based on the pressure sensitivity of your pen. Let's click on the plus sign and save this as our rake brush. For the bubble brush, again, choose your rectangular marquee and select the bubble. Go up to Edit and define a brush preset. Then we'll deselect and move over this area. For the settings, let's set the brush tip shape to be about 350 pixels. We'll set the spacing to be spaced out 100% so we can see all of them. Under Shape Dynamics, we want to have some different sized random shapes. So set the size of it to be about 50 or so percent. So you get some large and some small. And let's scatter it about. Choose Scattering. Set that to be about 230 percent. And we'll increase the count if you want more bubbles or less. I'll set mine up to two. 
If I was to paint now, now we get good bubbles. Let's also add some opacity transfer as well. So under transfer, this will allow us to adjust the opacity, making some more or less opaque to be about 75%. With this done, you can save this brush as bubbles brush. The leaf brush will give us the ability to also control the color. Again, use your rectangle to select it. Go up to Edit, down to Define the Brush, and we'll say OK to this name. Just like we've done with the bubbles, let's go to the Brush Tip Shape. Let's set the size to be about 300 pixels. We'll set the spacing to be about 100% to 115%. Looks good there. Under the Shape Dynamics, we're going to size it up about 70%. And we'll set the angle to be about 100%. So this will rotate in different sizes and different directions as well. Let's go to scattering. And we'll scatter them about, about 150%. And if you want, you can increase the count by up to three. And that'll give you many more brushes to play around with. The final thing we want to do is to add some color variation to it. Under color variation, we want to apply this every time we change our tip. So apply per tip. We're going to set the foreground and background jitter to be about 80%. Finally, we'll do some saturation jitter, make some more or less saturated by about 40%. Now you can set your foreground color to be something like red and your background color to be something like yellow. And when it paints, It'll alternate between red and yellow, or somewhere in between both of those. Let's save this brush as our leaf brush. Let's zoom out. Let's do some more complex brushes that deal with textures. For the print one, we're going to create three different sets of brushes. Notice that I've got a grayscale version of some newspaper print, and I can see the colors on the paper. What we want to do is we want to have different varyings of opacity, light, medium, and dark for this one. So again, I'm going to choose my rectangular marquee and select the area. Now, if I want to make this lighter, I can go up to Image, Adjustments, let's open our levels. Do make sure, however, you got your background layer selected. Now let's try it again. Image, Adjustments, Levels. Now with the background layer selected, I should be able to see my Levels preview pane. By clicking on the white arrow, I can drag this in, and you can see how I can lighten up this area. This will give us a lighter version of our tool. You can also adjust your grayscale or gray values and your darker scale. For now, I'll just lighten it up to right about here, and we'll say OK. We can now define this as a lighter version of the brush by going to Edit, Define Brush Presets. We'll go over to our test area. Let's set our brush tip shape to be about 250. We'll set our spacing to be pretty close in, around 10. We'll do some angle jitter under shape dynamics, to be about 20%. Excuse me, that's size jitter. There we go. And we'll do some scattering at about 100% for there. So this will give us a lighter version of that brush. To do this again, we're going to step back. Oops, first of all, let's save that as our light brush. Now we can go up to Edit, and we can undo our levels. And let's redo this again now as a medium version. Again, I've got this saved. Go up to Edit and define a brush preset. Go back to our shape dynamics and reset those to be about the same as well. Increasing your spacing, shape dynamics of angle, and also some scattering. And we'll set our brush to be a little bit smaller. Again, about 250. Now when I paint, I've got a darker version of it. I can save that, so we'll do this medium. 
And then finally, to make this darker, we can go back up to Select and reselect the area. We'll go up to Edit, excuse me, Image, and adjust the levels. And this time, we're going to bring in the darker tones and darken it up just a bit. Now with it much darker, we can say OK, deselect it, play around with our, excuse me, reselect it. Before we deselect it, we need to go to Image or Edit and define our brush. And now we can set up our settings. 250 for the size, space it out a bit, give it some angle jitter and also some scattering. And now I've got a much darker version of that brush. With this done, save this one up as our dark print. So for the print version, you need to have three different versions of this print one. By, do this by adjusting the levels of the image area that you have selected. For the dirt brush, we're going to blend together two different versions of brushes. This time, we're going to choose your elliptical marquee and we're going to set the feathering for this one to be 30 pixels. You can then click and drag on the inside of this area and this will select just the dirt. I know it will be a little bit hard to see. With this done, let's go up to Edit and Define your brush preset. When we go over to our brush tip shape, let's set it the size to be about 255 the spacing to be about 21, so we'll space it out a good bit. We'll add some size jitter under Shape Dynamics of 0, and the angle jitter, we'll set that to be about 100%. So let's go all the way over this way. Next, we want to turn on Dual Brush and combine this brush with the Hatch Brush that we just created. When you select Dual Brush, you need to scroll down and these are usually done in alphabetical order, so pay close attention to where they are and eventually you'll see your new hatch brush set up. It may be at the very bottom, it may be hiding, there it is right here. So here's our hatch, I can see the size is set to 250. We'll set the size of this one to be a little bit larger to about 350. The spacing, we'll space it in to be about 22. We're going to set the blending mode at the top to be linear height. With this done, when we test it, you can see this will give us a brush that looks like this. Some other things to play around with are your different blending modes. You can set that to be overlay or color dodge. Each one will give you some slightly different results. With this done, we'll save this brush as our dirt brush. To paint with a halftone pattern can be kind of tricky. To do this, we're going to return to our rectangular marquee tool and make sure feather is set to zero pixels. We're going to carefully select a set of dots. To do this, I'm going to click right in the center of one dot here and drag down and over until I'm at the center of another dot. And we want it to be nice and squared off, so right about there. Notice how each one is in the center of another dot at each little corner. That's going to be very important. Now, before we define a brush, we need to go to Edit and define the pattern. This will save up this pattern. Now I can go back up to Edit and let's, excuse me, not up to Edit, let's grab our paintbrush tool. And to use this dot pattern, we're simply going to choose a regular solid round brush. So I'm going to go up to the general brushes and choose hard round brush. We'll back out, go into our brush settings. We need to turn on texture. From here, you can tell it to choose the texture that we just defined, which should be at the very bottom of your area. So this one with it selected. We're going to set the scale of it to be about 50%. Right now we can't really see it, so I'm going to change my blending mode to multiply. Now I can see it really well. Excuse me, set my mode to subtract. Now I can see it perfectly. To clean it up, we can change the brightness to zero. Let's bring up the contrast to be about 100% so we can see just the dots by itself. 
you want, you can turn on or off the texture each tip. It won't make much of a difference for what we're doing. With this done, to test it out, we can go to our test area. And now you can see how you can paint individual dots. Let's save this up as our tone brush. The final brush we're going to create is a cloud-like texture brush. Even though it's showing a picture of a rock, let's make it cloudy. The selection tool we're going to use for this one is going to be your regular lasso tool. With the lasso tool, I'm simply going to choose and draw off kind of an amorphic shape, something that looks a lot like this. Again, we'll go up to Edit and define our brush preset. Then we'll go to our brush settings. The tip shape will set it to be about 250. The spacing will also be around 50%. Looks good. Let's turn on some scattering and set that to be about 20%. And we'll increase the count of it to be about 4. We'll also set the opacity of this by clicking on Transfer with an opacity jitter of zero, but we're going to control that opacity with our pin pressure. This will give us our cloud-like texture. From here, up in our control panel, we want to set the flow of this to be about 40 to 60 percent. And This is one thing you can play around with, any number between those. Now with your pin tool, you can play around and get a cloud-like texture by deselecting and be able to build up these clouds. We'll click on the plus sign and say this is cloud brush. Now in order to save all of our brushes, we need to go into our brush panel and clean it up a bit. Clicking on the drop down menu and scrolling down to the very bottom, you'll see all of the new brushes that you've created. Some of these brushes still have the sampled name and some of them have the new name that you've created. What I want to do is to click on each of the sampled brushes by holding down the Command key, and we want to get rid of just those. Sampled, sampled, and finally that first one was also one. By choosing the sampled brushes, you can now go up to the little cogwheel at the very top and choose Delete Brushes. This will delete only the brushes that we had selected, leaving you with the ones that you created down at the very bottom as well. Next, we can hold down Shift and select all of your brushes, and let's place them inside of a folder. Again, choose on the cogwheel, and choose New Brush Group, and we'll call this Your Name Brushes. The final thing you can do is to save this group as a brush file. With the group selected, go up to the little cogwheel, and choose Export Selected Brushes. When this is done, it'll ask you to save an ABR file. Do make sure you know where it's being saved to. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. I'm going to put it in my Brush Practices folder. And put your name on this ABR file. So this is Ben's Brushes. This ABR file is what you're going to upload to Moodle for this exercise grade.